Welcome everybody. Uh, this is gonna be our first rendition of the educational Smurf lobbies. I have assembled a group of my viewers of approximately the same MMR range, averaging about 1,700, putting most of the high MMR players on the opposite team. And we have made a private lobby where I will be effectively Smurfing on them. If you guys would like to sign up, you can check it out at patreon.com slash bsjgaming, where you will be able to join the Discord and be a, become a part of these educational Smurf lobbies yourself. The more people we have, the more games we can run, and the more videos that I'll be able to make for you guys. I want to be able to give you the same educational content without having that negative impact on the community because I know how often you guys have to deal with Smurfs in your games. And I want to teach you how to think for when the Dota games uh, at your bracket, despite all the chaos and making sure you are doing all the right things. So let's go ahead and jump into game number one and we'll see how it goes. Banana slam jam. So today I'll be playing four position and our goal is to talk about what it takes to have the most impact in the game when you are playing four position. When I'm thinking about what it takes to end the game, I think it takes wave clear, kill threat, and objective take. That's why I love playing Shadow Shaman four position because he does all of these things very well. So what I will be doing in this game is looking to prioritize the key things in the game and kind of sift through the chaos that is what random people do, right? Uh, so when I look at our lineups, first thing I'll ask myself is how much synergy I have with my three position. In this particular instance, I have a Nature's Prophet. I like to have range plus melee pretty much all the time. And since I have two squishy range dudes, it's not particularly ideal, so I will be um, playing a lot outside of the lane, looking to rotate towards mid, securing runes. That's why I have the wind lace. I wanted a bit of regen so I don't have boots. So because I'm going to be playing a lot outside of lane, and I also uh, have movement speed item, I'm actually going to look for a ward behind their tower. Something really nice to do when you plan to play around the side of the lane and move around in general. Especially on high base damage heroes like Shaman. That should have no issue... Killing that pesky courier. The mangoes will help me trade. They also give me the mana to use my Q for securing range because Nature's Prophet can't really secure range. So just keeping a general eye out on what my teammates are doing. I have a carry Faceless Void mid Lena. They have what looks like a mid sniper carry Spectre. So we have a pretty strong lane in comparison to them. We're gonna looking to be pretty aggressive here. Pretty bad use of a tango since I do have um, three mangoes to get the, that health back. Gonna be looking to block small. It's really big as a forward to note that this camp wins you the lane and this camp wins them the lane and abusing pull camps on either side is absolutely essential to winning. So I'm gonna predominantly play the left side of the lane looking to harass the Spectre. The CM's job is to kind of harass me away from harassing the Spectre. So as long as he's not doing that, then I will um, hit the Spectre, right? So helping my Nature's Prophet with some creep aggro here, making sure we don't lose the creeps. So notice how those creeps were in a tough spot for him to get, so I move them back towards him. Something you can do oftentimes is support as long as you feel like the opponent can't really punish you. And CM Spectre is not exactly like a scary lane, so I'm happy to do moves that are otherwise considered out of position. If I was against like a CK Lich or something, I would not do that. So aggroing to range for my Nature's Prophet, and then we're gonna help him deny a little bit. The lane's pushing into us. We'll use the big camp if we feel like we need to fix the lane, but the lane is pushing into us already, so. Totally fine if we just kind of contest the Spectre a little bit for some CS there. Messing with the CS, securing range for our offlaner. Very standard thing so far of what you'll want to look to do as support. And look to hit them when we have melee creeps and they don't. So I'm not like purposely yoinking these CS for my offlaner. I'm just trying to help him it so that they the enemy doesn't get the denies, right? I'm gonna body block one more time. Lane's near our tower-ish, so we're pretty happy. Uh I think he has his W on CM because he didn't he doesn't have the aura buff. So that means they might be going for a kill on me. Not gonna contest these. I could actually try to snipe that courier if I make it in time. Nah, that would have needed boots to get that. The lane's pushing in a bit now. Actually, no, it's still not pushing in. I'm gonna help my Nature's Prophet push it in because I wanna pull the hard camp. And because I don't feel like I'm doing much else in the lane. 
And I think we can punish them a bit. I could have secured that range, but I'm prioritizing pushing the lane. Okay, well, I'm griefing my nature's profit now. So now we're going to push the lane. And with this lane getting pushed here, I can actually pull this camp right now. There we go. We got the pull off. And this is a great way to abuse squishy supports like CM that can't really afford to contest pull camps. She doesn't want to walk out here. We're effectively forcing her out of position. And we denied a few creeps along the way. And so just know how impactful that was to deny those creeps. And if that's more impactful than actually laning straight up, it's a great option. We're going to look not really too concerned about runes this game because the enemy mid is a sniper who doesn't really utilize runes that well. There's a lot of different skill builds that you can go on Shadow Shaman. Uh, I'm going to like to go for the one that gives me wave clear because I want that to be a way for me to get reliable farm. Might be feeding here. Nope. I'm going to back. Ideally, I would not have taken that much damage. Um, I'm going to take a lot of harass in this lane, and I have three mangoes for mana right now. So I want to balance, like, mana health usage. So I'm going to go back to base since I have full mana. I haven't really been casting too many spells. Nature's Prophet's been pretty chill overall. He hasn't been really trying to harass the opponent all that much, so it's hard for me to make, like, high harass plays. I'm going to fill my mids bottle every time I go back to base like this, if I'm a support. Really good habit to get into. Every time you go back to base, check your mid's bottle status. And if you could use a refill, then you just run back to your lane. So CM got a pull off, picking up Bounty Rune on the way here. Despite the fact that we were forced back to base, Nature's Prophet was doing fine without us. So we're definitely gonna look to secure the six minute rune. Just gonna block this camp. So what happens here is the lane's pushing into my Prophet. The lane's gonna be fixed without us being there. So this is a great opportunity to potentially fuck with mid. I wish I had shackles. I wish I had like a one 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 skill build to do what I'm doing currently. But that's okay. Flying ourselves a TP, checking out the top lane, feeding a little bit. Just, just do your thing. Just fucking with him a bit. So we have nothing else to do because the lane's pushed into our nature's profit, and he's not playing very aggressive. So even though that looked kind of like a waste, there just wasn't much else to do in the game. Ideally, at this moment, I would have a ward. And notice how since the lane's near my Prophet's tower, he's like pretty chill without me. So we can kind of just fuck with this sniper. We're literally just gonna either shock his ass. Help our Lena secure rune. And we're just gonna D ward around the mid lane, making sure the sniper doesn't have any uh, wards that prevent us from being impactful while I do this. Watching the bottom lane, because that is the guy we left behind. And looping behind top, because that is a very strong lane at nighttime, the Night Soccer lane. But support, you just want to make sure all your lanes are kind of checked off, you know? So bottom lane looks good. Made a quick rotation to top, gonna do a little body blocking action. So notice how we're kind of just free-flowing with the map, checking and seeing, like, is this guy okay? Okay, he's okay. Even if we could play bottom, there's not much to do there. And we're going to TP now, because he's in trouble a bit. See how we're just kind of babysitting everybody? That's the life of the supports. And steal a CS as our lane tax here. Okay, so we're going to give ourselves raindrops, because we're lacking a bit of mana regen with the tranquils. And we have a stacked hard camp, actually, so that's an option to just pull right now. Something to do down here since we TP'd. We're kind of stuck here for a little bit. I'm actually going to hit these creeps down because I want to get some levels right now. This is like an efficiency pull, which is really important. Um, we actually didn't kill the big creep, which kind of sucks. That's like a really powerful big camp. So they killed all of our wards mid, which we're not happy about. That's definitely not going to cut it. Notice how we're kind of just moving around. Uh, Lena is not getting the rune. Maybe we can help. We're going to disguise ourselves. He has night vision on sniper, so we don't want to scare him. I accept your guidance. Ah, he didn't go for it. All good. Guide me. I thought he was going to go for the stun. And if he hit the stun, we could have probably followed up. Looks like we got some pressure on bottom tower. It's actually super low. I'm going to place this ward to kind of see where CM's moving around the map. And also, like, it's just an aggressive version of, like, a war between bottom and mid. So we got the tower. Might actually kill CM here. 
Not gonna steal the core. Last hit from our core. Gonna body block. Oh, okay. Can just hit this guy. What's up, bro? Okay. So Lino's sitting at low mana. We're picking up more bounty runes. Notice how like we are not needed anymore. Or we're not needed here anymore. Let's go. See you guys later. So really unhappy about this ward control mid problem here. We're gonna be placing a sentry when we walk by, but we really want to set up our Lena for successor. Hmm. So he doesn't have a ward on it. We're just trying to get ward control of this mid lane because it's two ranged heroes, right? Two squishy guys. The best way to protect squishy guys is vision. So we're keeping an eye out on top. Bottom lane went quite well. Nature's Prophet got good solo levels. He's going Witchblade. Arlena's going Maelstrom. He's going Mask of Madness on Faces Void. So, you know, since we're playing with viewers, we would hope they'd go to seemingly normal items. We got a Stream Sniper here, even though I'm not streaming. Uh, that means he might have a ward there. So that's important to keep in mind. So notice how we've secured every single rune. We're going to get uh, Tome oh, uh, tom of Knowledge to get that level 6. I'm maxing out the skill that lets me farm, but I'm not really farming. Um, honestly, in this spot, there's just nothing to do. So I'm going to hit some neutral creeps in a way that like, I'm near the cores that I would want to help. Which is mid and top. Or mid and bottom, I mean. So Nature's Prophet's a global hero. We want to play away from him for the most part. We can like protect him, but any plays we make that are proactive are away from him. Might even be worth smoking to try to sneak up on this sniper. But he's playing really cautious. Can we TP Nature's Prophet on Mithar? Because I want him to tank for my... For my... Wards. And that works, I guess. Ideally, those wards would have been in tower range. But we have a catapult. And the whole idea here is that we were simply camping the opponent. That was like, if the sniper ever tried to do something, we were there to stop it. And we kind of just have to compare and kill the illusion. Have to compare like our map impact to the other support. Unfortunately, their specter just got solo XP. Don't want him to kill our wards. I'm actually just gonna fuck with him a little bit here. Like this is a don't let the carry farm unharassed situation. So we don't have wards for a little while. That means our playmaking potential is drastically lower, which is totally fine. Uh, I'm going to try to stack a camp for some efficiency. Always playing around mid for runes as support. Unless they have like a clock type support that can just kill me on the map. Uh, as long as I feel safe walking around the map like this, this is by far the best way to play. Some games you'll play against supports that are very intimidating and maybe even just like kill you on the map. But whenever the op opponent has like squishy supports like CM and non-stunning supports like Tree, you should be frolicking. You know, moving around the map a lot. This guy went Maelstrom. We just, now we're just trying to kind of interfere with Spectre's farm. I think he's over here somewhere. Like we saw Spectre, we're not making any plays. So all we're really thinking about is farm. Our Nature's Prophet's getting farm. We want the Spectre to be bothered, you know? Just bothered. We're just bothering him. We're not trying to do anything fancy. But now that we bothered him and drew a support over, we're gonna back off a little bit. Trying to tell Arlena to drop the shovel. I mean, I'll take the fucking fairy trinket, man, if he doesn't want it. So yeah, I see that we're farming more than 50% of the map. So I'm pretty happy with what's going on here. Most importantly, I don't really feel like there's much I can do about it. Like, I can't change anything that's happening. Um, so there's three heroes bottom. I'm actually going to look to TP top. Uh, he has Chrono in 14. Sure. So I'm going to TP top here because I see three heroes bottom and we have Chronosphere. And we can just pressure the tower. Just push the lane. Night Stalker is very bad at defending towers, so. Okay. Retreat to our wards because those things kind of protect us. Nice. And these are just nice pressure moves that we're making, you know? Oh, I killed my courier. Uh, a little bit of stack spells there. Probably gonna die for it. Or just baiting. 
hard to talk and use spells at the same time, you know? So the nice thing about triangles in these types of spot is that you can stay on the map with just some clarities. Whenever you feel like you're struggling to stay on the map as support, triangles are usually your go-to. So definitely a positioning-based game, but we're against heroes that can catch us, the Spectre and the Night Stalker. So we're going to buy a Glimmer Cape. So very much a vision game, right? Uh, in the sense that if they see us, they can have a much easier time killing us. So we just don't want them to see us, you know. That'd be really annoying here. <laughs> I can't do anything about it? Why not? He's going four staff. Two people farming bottom. Kind of back to normal. Like, notice how we made a play because we had ultimate. We looked for people to make a play around. Void. Last thing you want to do is not have your ult. That guy not have your ult and try to make a play. So now we're just chilling. The map is like stagnant and we are super happy just trading um, until our ultimates are up again. So right now I'm just camping mid to be like kind of a threat. Oh shit. There's heroes. They're going. They're looking for me. So we're back. Now we see a tree and it looks like he's going meteor hammer. Going to continue playing around mid lane for the runes. Um, they might have a ward here, actually. I could be not lazy and place the ward on the ground. Am I in trouble? Make it double? Ah! So at this point, we're kind of just stomping them. Gonna place our wards to make full impact in the team fight. Most notably, we'll be dead for 25 seconds, and the fight was already over. Might be able to get some CS with these wards. Not the best wards, because our team couldn't do anything to keep the opponent in place, but Void has Mask of Madness, Maelstrom, Chronosphere, avail Chronosphere available, so it's kind of like, we have playmaking potential, but we don't have to do anything. Um, so, the only difference is, is, since I'm not anonymous in this lobby, my teammates will probably listen to me. Which might be a bit different than your pubs. Um, so, maybe not the most authentic experience there. But, um, thinking about our next play is definitely a good habit to get into as support. Most notably, this whole idea of like monitoring the map. We talked about the lanes, we talked about the map here. It's just like, is everything that's happening okay you know and so when when we're winning the lane or game i tend to default to playing mid that's just the lane that indicates the most control on the map because it's in the middle <laughs> of the map uh lena's farming void's farming so it's like only time i don't farm as support is when i feel like me farming makes the cores that are supposed to be farming not farm so in this case, it's like, this guy's farming, this guy's farming, this guy's farming. I don't feel like I have to protect them while they farm, so I'm going to farm. Sniper didn't really go any acceleration items. Zimmer Cape's a pretty big deal. Um, we're going to let this guy finish this camp, and then we're going to smoke him to the top. So against heroes like Night Stalker, we don't want to just run in. Play some wards for the fight. And that's a, consider that a tower defended. So now we're trying to ping for our team to go Roche. We're going to let our Void do that first. Looks like they can't hear our pings. Maybe I'm muted or some shit. So we're not going to do it because nobody was showing up. Buy ourselves some value win lace action here. Okay, easy. Honestly, probably a maxed hex game. I wasn't thinking carefully about my skill build. It's kind of scary to stand in place against Sniper, Night Stalker, CM, or uh, Spectre. So as my, I basically think how scary is it for me to stand in place? And the scarier it is, the more I'll max hex. But I didn't really consider that this game because I'm distracted. So we still have wards. We're just kind of playing aggressively on the map now. 
We see bottom tower is dying. Lena doesn't have BKB yet. I mean, at this stage in the game, you'll find yourself in these pups sometimes, right? You're up 19 to 5. This is the These are the games that you have to make sure you don't lose, right? You should really never lose these games, theoretically. So the only way you really lose these games is by rushing. By forcing things that you're not quite strong enough to do. So Nature's Prophet came in. He's got BKB. This guy's pretty strong. We're happy to play behind him. Like, I want to rush, but my team isn't showing up. So they are doing a good job of uh, imitating pups. We just want to make sure they don't see us moving around this area. And actually use our courier to scout this high ground, because we saw that CM sentry. Uh, they're all here, so we're not going to force anything. I'm actually going to go bottom, because they're all here. Same idea as before, right? Force a bunch of heroes to somewhere. And then just see another guy and run at him. Glimmer Cape for a little bit of information here. So the theme's pretty common, where you apply pressure in certain places. Like, notice how we pissed the Spectre off, we postured on the Sniper mid. Then the supports on the enemy team are like, oh shit, we gotta help this guy. And so, I didn't actually mean to smoke there. And uh, then they help that guy, same thing as here, and then you go kill someone else. Um, don't have to force this. That was actually an accidental smoke. Your middle tower might need a little attention. Should have bought that a bit earlier. Go. Gonna buy components of our Etherlands. So if you like accidentally smoke or you smoke and nothing happens, totally fine. We moved across the map. Just kind of repositioned ourselves aggressively after TPing bottom. Uh, we don't have TP for this guy. Next step is Roche. I know that for a fact that the next objective we're playing for is Roche. You should never feel panicked. You want to think carefully, like, do I need to go to that fight? So, like, I looked at that fight, and I didn't see anything particularly to do. So I'm going to be pretty adamant now that we Roche. Roche is done. Ideally, we would have liked to smoke out of this, I think, because we have BKB Chrono, but I used my smoke accidentally. Isn't farming all that much. We're going to stack the camps nearby for our course. Always keep an eye on the clock. So we don't have really anything right now, and there's no reason to walk at this mid tower, in my opinion. I feel like what happens is you can just farm them out. The enemy is sitting in their base. No reason to not just farm. So I will do my own thing farming. Uh, if my team ever does group up like that. Always remember to play the map, guys. Always remember to play the map. So Nature's Prophet's playing the map. Now we're just playing the map. They smoked. So we're just playing here to break their smoke if they show up. Hopefully our boy doesn't die to the smoke. We're looking to join this fight. We're pretty strong here. They're walking into our vision. Our guy has BKB. Not really using his time walk. Okay, sus. Okay. Got the chrono on. We're getting chased by some Spectre illusions here. Notice how the Glimmer Cape comes in handy. Again, Spectre illusions in the ship. Ow. Notice the patience, you know? Respect the illusions, they are zoning you, right? Against a hero like Spectre, the worst thing you can do is be chased by illusions and think you need to help your teammates and run in and lose 80% of your HP to the illusions and have Sniper right-click you twice. So considering our threats and fights was something we did with our first item, right? That was why we bought Glimmer Cape. Because we anticipated that, that would be an annoyance. That would help, that would prevent us from being impactful in fights. So I haven't gone Shard yet because I wanted these two big items. I do think Shard is really nice here. So it's just a nice item on Shaman in general. It's really nice for specifically clearing waves and we didn't really need that this game. But we have wards again. We're just playing on top of our actual wards, right? Sitting behind our teammates because we're a backline support. Some games Shaman needs to be a blinker. That's when uh, the opponent has a lot of mobility. We're thinking like they have an anti-mage and we need to sh surprise them. Uh, ambush him. But in this case, they don't really have mobile split push heroes. Like every hero we want to stun, we will see them in front of us. 
So in that case, we want Etherlands cast range, defensive item like Four Staff or Glimmer. Sit back, waiting for our team. Just play wards, you know? If you don't know what else to do, just sit on a ward. Especially the later the game goes. So runes are spawning. This guy's got Mjolnir BKB. So whatever core we think is in the most precarious position at every moment, which in this last, previously it was Lena, now it's Nature's Prophet. We're just sitting behind these guys. Our goal in Dota, in any role, is to outfarm the opponent. So as support, I'm not the one actually farming, but I'm just following the people that are farming. Just following them around. I'm pretty strong. I don't really have any items I absolutely need. The Philosopher's Stone pays massive dividends, so I'll be getting a lot of gold anyway. Lena's farming our jungle too. Going Silver Edge for the Spectre, that's nice. Night Stalker has a blink. That means I'm actually gonna go four stab over shard. I think I need the four stab as well. And we're kind of just setting up a map position where the opponent can't do much. So we're gonna safely path ourselves to this fight. We feel comfortable fighting here because there is a ward. Just protecting people, right? That's all we're doing. We're sitting behind and protecting them. Just ensuring that that high ground's not warded. It's just kind of too good of a ward, right? Want to have a smoke ward sentry on us as much of the game as possible. So a lot of people would think they have sniper, they have specter. That's a lot of late game. Let's panic. What I want you to think is our team's farming 80% of the map. That's all that matters. If we're farming way more than they are, we just don't care what their lineup is. We were even checking the camp in order to stack it before the minute mark. And we're initiating the farm backwards sequence. Oh, well, that didn't work out. I didn't expect Dagger to work like that. I thought he would be leashed. In these types of moments, it's really good to place lane wards just to prevent the opponent from being able to sneak out of their base. So we're just going to plant a little bit of a lane ward there. Oh. Well, I got d -word. Oh, they see me. That's not good. And I have been sacrificed. That's why you don't place the sentry on the actual hill, guys. That's why you're supposed to place the sentry here and use your courier. Because then we would see this ward and I would not die. So you can tell your team to back here, get on the same page. They don't have to force anything. But honestly, I don't prefer to do that myself. I kind of just let them make their own decisions. Unless it has to do with my hero. So if I'm like, hey guys, my hero can go Roche, then you know I'll tell my team back off in Roche. But if my team's going high ground, I'm not gonna advise them. I'm just gonna let them do whatever they think their heroes are supposed to do. And that's generally my mantra in terms of communication. So we have a smoke available, which is nice. I'm going to put it in my inventory because Roche is going to be spawning soon. Generally, mid to late game Dota is just all about Roshan. And uh, making sure if you want to close out a game, that you get it. So we're going to put the Windlace down as well. Aegis Prophet is just fucking giga chatting these guys. And okay, so initiating a little bit of 3 2 2 action. Okay, so we don't want to force anything. Not gonna worry ourselves. Might have a ward up here. Maybe I'm giving them too much credit with that. These are a decent portion of the game, or a decent stage of the game where you feel like you want to deward their stuff, but you really don't know where their dewards are because they haven't been moving much. So it's a pretty good idea to buy a gem when you have that exact vibe. I want to deward them, but I'm not really sure where their wards are. Boom, gem, you know? It's especially good when we're worried about map control. We're thinking like, let's keep the opponent in their base. Let's like corral them a bit. Gym is especially important in these spots. A lot of people ask, when do I buy gym as support? Pretty much the feeling you'll want to have. Even though we're up 30 to eight, like this is, we're against Spectre Sniper. We could easily throw this game. The opponent's not showing any heroes, and Spectre's the only one that is showing, and Spectre's a global hero. So we have to respect their playmaking potential. But now that we see that they're in base, we should feel pretty good. We're just monitoring Rush. We don't care about anything they do bottom. We don't want to show ourselves here, you know. Camping high grounds with wards until Rush. Very standard Dota gameplay. Uh, so this is going to be a map control smoke. I was going to smoke us. I'm actually going to smoke us back. 
This is a, I want to take control of the entire map. We have four smokes. So I just want to move around without randomly getting ambushed because I'm on top of a ward. Scanning high grounds on the way around. So the one concern you have to have when you make those type of TPs is that the opponent tries to move out of base. So notice how they tried to move out of their base because they saw that I was bottom. And that was why I immediately smoked and tried to make a play happen. And so if you play this way where we're playing for map control, locking the opponent in base... They honestly just have to eventually be greedy. They have to eventually try to get extra farm on the map because they're just losing. They are just straight losing. It feels horrible. They want to do something about it. And uh, you just have to look for those opportunities. And also you have to think about things you're doing that allow the opponent to leave base. So by TPing bottom, I allowed them to leave base. And that's why I smoked back. Okay. Just cautiously helping. Cautiously helping. Just gonna use shackles to get boards. Okay, that's real. A ballsy, my friend. I think it's important to note that I did put more high MMR players on their team than mine. So I don't want you guys to feel like, you know. I have some scarf on my team. That is a thing. I think the biggest thing that I felt like happened in this game, um, playing support, was that we secured all three lanes. We made a casual gank pop. We made sure Nature's Prophet was okay bottom. And we... Ah! And we also... Uh, secured most of the runes. We filled Lena's bottle, we secured most of the runes. So I think the babysitting process of the early game was super important this time around. Our void prioritized our Wraith Band over Jim, Sag. Nobody wants our Jim. Not even valuable enough to them to take it. 37 minute neutrals are coming out. We have Megas. We should be pretty being chilling. We have Nature's Prophet plus Megas, so the lanes will just be in our favor times a million, so just not overly concerned. Went for a nice luxury item. Gives us some HP. Obviously cooldown reduction is fantastic. That's not all I can do, I think. Oh, he's alive. I couldn't even see that he was alive. So we lock down the crucial right clicker in the back, ignore the useless support. Could have force stabbed in if I felt like I had to, but if I don't feel like I have to, then I will obviously hold on to my defensive spells. So we're just checking for wards now. I'll place some wards down to end the game. I guess so sniper doesn't kill our wards. We're just here to hex him in case he tries to hit our wards. So this lobby reminder was about a seventeen hundred average. If you guys would like to participate in these lobbies, the first dibs go to Patreons. Uh, in the $5 and $7 tier, the starters package and the deluxe package, uh, patreon.com slash BSJ gaming. Next up is the Twitch subscribers. And if we ever need people that can fill in the slots and we don't have full lobbies, we will be using anyone that is in the discord, the BSJ discord. Um, you can find that information below in the description and you can always come to my Twitch stream and ask me. So if you guys enjoyed this content, you'll be seeing more in the near future. And if you want to participate, make sure you check it out.